This video is a supplement of Chapter 5 of the Simio and Simulation textbook, and Chapter 5 focuses on intermediate modeling with Simio. And this video focuses right here on Model 5.1, uh, PCB Assembly, and what we'll do in the video is cover all of the Simio aspects of this problem. So we're not going to cover the model verification uh, and validation, that's covered in the textbook, and we're not going to cover the Simio framework because that's also covered in the textbook and in other videos. Model 5.1 is the first version of a PCB or printed circuit board assembly model, and we'll be building on this model throughout this chapter, and we'll also revisit it in subsequent chapters. And so you can see here uh, a um, abstract view of the uh, system where we have boards arrive at the rate of 10 per hour. They go through a placement operation where you're placing components on the board, and the placement server uh, has a uh, service rate or mu of uh, 15 per hour. Uh, the boards then after placement go through an inspection which operates at the rate of 20 per hour and once they finish inspection 92 percent of those boards are considered good and 8 percent of those boards are considered uh, bad and are disposed of. So the figure shows the arrival rate and service rates and of course when we implement this simulation we need inter arrival times and service times. So our inter arrival times we're going to assume are exponentially distributed with a mean of six minutes. And so that gives us our arrival rate of 10 per hour. Our placement, so service time at placement, is going to be triangular, three, four, five, also minutes. And inspection is going to be um, uniform, two, four, minutes. And so you can see with the triangular 345 it's symmetric and so the mean is 4 minutes and so that would correspond to a rate of 1 fourth per minute or 15 per hour and the service time mean is 3 and so the service rate would be 1 third per minute or 20 per hour. And so these are the values that we will uh, use in our Simio model. So in looking at this system, there are really only two differences between some of the models that we've seen before. One is that in this model we have two servers, and so we have the output from one going to the input of another. And two is we have this probabilistic split. So leaving the inspection, we have a proportion, 92%, go one place, and the remaining uh, proportion of 8% go to another place. And so those are the things that we'll see uh, differently from what we uh, have done in our single server model. So let's jump into Simio. You can see that I just have the standard um, uh, Simio model open here. And so I'm just going to create the model. Uh, so I'm going to place the source object first. Then I'm going to place two server objects, one here and one here. And then I have two sinks. So I have our uh, um, one sink there, and then finally I have another sink there. I'm going to go place my uh, model entity, and then I'm going to connect all of these up. So I'm going to connect these up with uh, connectors. So let's just click on the output of source 1 to the input of server 1. Note that I double clicked on the connector, and because I double clicked, that puts me in multi-place mode. That's why I didn't have to go back and click connector again. So then I do the output of server 1 to the input of server 2 then the output of server 2 to uh, sync 1, and the output of server 2 uh, to sync 2. And then I can hit the escape key, or I can right-click my mouse to get out of multi-place mode. And note that if you don't do that, if you don't escape or click, you're going to end up panning all around your model, uh, and it, uh, it gets confusing. So uh, remember that you can always get out of multi-place by right-clicking or uh, by hitting the escape key. So here's the basic structure of our model. Uh, we have the source, server, server, our two sinks. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go rename my object instances. And so this is important when we're building larger models so that you know, when we get to the output analysis and computing or using Simio expressions that we uh, can have uh, names that make sense uh, to a human. So I'm just going to name my entity instance PCB. I'm going to name server1 placement. I'm going to name server2 inspection. And now I have two sinks, and so I have to decide which one is which. So I'm going to uh, assume that the good boards go here and the bad boards uh, go here. And so now at this point, I'm going to run my model and just see what happens. Again, I haven't changed any of the parameters of any of the, uh, of any of the object instances. I haven't 
done anything about this this probability split and so what I would expect to see uh, is that half the boards go to good and half the boards go to bad and so I would go you know I can go to fast forward and just fast through the default of 24 hours uh, and go look at the results and if I look at the results you can see that I have let's see so model entity I have 5654 and then if I just scroll down and look at my two sinks, I have a bad sink and a good sink. And I haven't done this math, but I should see half of them go to bad and half of them go, uh, I'm sorry, half of them go to good. And so th those numbers look pretty, uh, pretty close. Uh, so I'm pretty satisfied at this point based on my uh, two things, based on my preliminary analysis and based on how simple this model uh, is. So now that we've done the preliminary object placement uh, and gone through a little bit of verification to make sure we're seeing what we expected, uh, let's add the customization. So I'm going to expand this just a little bit. The first thing I'm going to do is change the uh, in arrival time. And so we want this to be exponential with a mean of 6. And so I'll just change that to exponential 6. And one thing to note uh, that we have bold. So we have a bold font here. And what bold means in the property window is that you have changed something from its default value. And so if I go to placement, for example, we see that we have random triangular 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, which is in fact the default. And so it's not bold. But if I go in and update it with the values that uh, we have for this problem, which is 3, 4, 5, now it becomes bold, indicating that it uh, has been changed from its default. Similarly, we'll do inspection, and it's a uniform, uh, so you could use the expression builder unless uh, you know it's just uniform, uh, that the word is just uniform with two parameters, 2 and 4, so uh, lower value of 2, upper value of 4. So now we have the in arrival time of 6, the service time at placement of uh, three, four, five, service time and inspection at uh, uh, two, four. The last thing we need to do is we need to handle this um, uh, probabilistic split between good and bad. And if you remember, we have 90, 92% are good uh, and 8% are bad. Within Simio, Simio, there are a variety of ways we can do this. Uh, we're going to use the simplest method here, uh, where we just use what are called uh, selection weights. So I click on the connector 4 in this case, and I look over here, and I see a selection weight of 0.1. And so I'm going to change that value to 0.92 for 92% uh, are going to go this way. And then I will change the selection weight on the second one, or on the one going to bad sync, uh, to 0.08. And so obviously what you see is that I'm having a 1, so I'm just taking a proportion uh, um, uh, of, of the value 1. And so again, 92% are going to go this way, and 8% uh, are going to go uh, that way. And so when you look back at what we had for the default values, we had 1 and 1. And so let's talk just a second before we run about how Simio implements uh, this um, uh, routing based on selection weight. So let me just click here and bring this up and say what happens here is that we had a, let's call this W1 of 0.92 and a W2 of 0.08. And what Simeo does is it says the probability of taking uh, route I is equal to the weight of I divided by the sum of the other weights, or of all weights you know, that, that, um, uh, that emanate from that node. And so in this case, uh, if you add these up, so the sum of our weights uh, will be 1, and the individual values, 0.92 and 0.8, is what leads to the probability that we're after. Similarly, if we go back to the default values where we had 1 and 1, well, the sum was 2, so in the denominator uh, we had a 2, and the numerator of each we had a 1, and that's why we, that was my expectation that half would go one way and half would go the other way. And as we'll see going forward, this, the, the way these weights are calculated is a really powerful way, and we're going to exploit that uh, for entity routing uh, a little bit later on. And so also note that I don't have to use probabilities here. So in other words, I could just as easily have used 92 and 8, or 9.2 and 0.8, or anything, uh, any combination that leads to uh, W1 over the sum is equal to 0.92 and W2 over the sum is equal to 0.8. I could use any combination that I want uh, to get to uh, to get to those values. Okay, so back to our model, uh, and now we can run. And of course, I'm going to you know watch the model. I've changed the, I've slowed down the uh, processing time quite a bit. So let's just crank up the uh, 
uh, speed factor a bit. Let's let's make it even bigger, up to 20, uh, and we can just watch it uh, watch it run. Since I'm not using paths, it's kind of difficult to see entities moving into the uh, good or bad. So I'm just going to just fast forward for a second, uh, and let's have a look at uh, the results that we get. So we fast forward for a default of 24 hours, and go look at the results. And again, when we look, I'm particularly interested in this in this um, separation. So I go down and I see that in my bad sync, I had 28. In my good sync, I had 226. And so again, that looks like kind of a reasonable split of 92% uh, and 8%. Again, keeping in mind that we ran one replication uh, and uh, this is a probabilistic split. So we wouldn't expect it to be exactly 92 and 8. We'd expect it to probabilistically split or probabilistically uh, be 0.92 and 0.8. And so if we replicated this model, so if we conducted an experiment, uh, we could do uh, a more detailed evaluation of that. So let's give that a try. So we go back to our project home and again go to the new experiment. And so that creates an experiment with the default number of replications of 10. And so let's also go and change the runtime. Let's change the runtime a bit. I think in the uh, in the book, we did 1,200 hours, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so we can just change that to 1,200 hours and uh, run 10 replications. And let's see what that uh, what that does. Hopefully, it won't take too long to run. If it does, I'll stop the video and come back. If it doesn't take too long, I'll just keep talking. Uh, it looks like it's going pretty well. So we're 10 replications have run. So now we can go to our pivot grid, uh, and we can uh, look at the values that we're interested in. And so we said we're interested in that, that particular split. So one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to filter my pivot grid here. So let's filter my pivot grid so that all I see are the sync values. And that way I don't have to scroll. And I can see that I have 971 uh, on average between our replications and uh, 11,000. And so, uh, you know, it's not out of the realm of possibility. I mean, that seems like a reasonable, uh, reasonable values. Uh, we could do that. Uh, we could compute that, compute that probability or compute what the uh, proportion is uh, manually. Or we could go back in and add these as response values. So let's look at that option uh, first. So let's go do a response and let's just call this proportion uh, that go to uh, good. Let's just do uh, let's just do one of them here. And what I'm going to do first, instead of having a proportion, is I'm just going to have the number of good parts. So if you just type good, which we know is our sync object name, input buffer, buffer, there is a number entered value. And so this gives me the number of entities that entered the good sync. And so if I just run that, well, let's go ahead and do the bad one for this too. So let's do proportion bad. Even though we know the proportion, once we get to that, is going to be um, it's going to be one minus what we have for the good. So let's just do bad here, and input buffer number entered. So number entered. There we go. And so we then reset and run. And now we'll let our, our 10 replications run. And what we should see is the actual number, or the average number across those uh, that 10 replications. So even though I named it proportion good and proportion bad, we haven't, get, we haven't yet gotten there. And so there we go. There's our 11,000 that we saw, uh, our 11,971 that we saw uh, when we looked at the pivot grid. So in order to get these into proportion, I need to divide by the total number. And so I'm going to create that expression by just opening the expression builder and taking the number entered. And then I'm going to divide by the PCB, which is the population of entities. And we're going to do that by number destroyed. Because number destroyed will be the ones that went into one of the two sinks. Right? So I'm going to just copy that here using Control c And then I'm going to go over to my proportion bad uh, and just paste that in. So now we have a PCB number destroyed. And so now we've converted our actual uh, number that entered the two into a proportion. And what we would hopefully see, what we will hopefully see, is 92% and 8%. And so in fact, yes, we see this is 91.92 and then 0.08 uh, and so on. And then of course we can go and look at our uh, confidence intervals uh, as we normally would through a verification process. And so that is the conclusion of model 5.1, where again, the differences are 
between our single server model is that we went from the output of one server into the input of another one. Not a difficult thing. Uh, and then we probabilistically routed entities to uh, two different sinks, in this case a good sink and a bad sink. Uh, and then we went through the process of creating an experiment so that we could uh, look at these two values and make sure that we were uh, getting what we expected. And now before we go, uh, for this video, make sure that you save the model because we're going to come back and use this model uh, in the next uh, video. So I'm going to save this. Let's see, where do I want to save this? I don't want to save it there. I'm going to go to C temp and just save this for as model 5.1. And then when we, in the next video, we will uh, use this and build upon, uh, build upon it for model 5.2.